Good afternoon once again. Today I'm going to talk about SAS caches. Yeah, I'll come on to it in a minute. Um, before I do that, when you think back to the start of the COVID pandemic, people clearing their shelves, trolley after trolley full of kit that they don't really need, panic, pathetic really. People say, how are you getting on, Rusty? You know what? What I've done in my life has prepared me for what's going on right now. And, you know, that's how people should look at it. There's lots like me. <clears throat> you don't have to put up with everything, but you have to make it work. So when I think about that, and the shelves get cleared in the supermarkets so you go to find somewhere else to panic by and and you feed in and feed in think about the lads in the four-man patrol thousands of miles away from home in the jungles okay they don't have that problem however the good news is that if you can't locate a cache, and I'll tell you how difficult it is in a minute, that may have been there from quite a while before you get there. And I'm talking about over a year, sometimes way longer. And they've been pre-positioned there by some of your own guys, just in case they were ever needed. So you have a mission, let's say, to locate the caches see if they've survived see if they're still you can eat what's in there um the ammunition everything else the cage can be as big as you as you want it there's as many boxes as you want providing that you have waterproof because the jungle is wet hot humid once you've buried this stuff and you go back you're going to need it so we'll just quickly talk about that so an SAS cache, well, we know what a computer cache is, don't we? Loads of files, you just sod them off when you don't want them. However, a cache that's buried in the jungle somewhere is going to be needed at some stage, be it on operations, be it on exercise. And the guys that have buried these caches way before you're ever going to need them have to make sure that they do it correctly. Because if not, and it's not logged correctly, first of all, you never find it. That means you're not going to eat and get resupply, maybe of ammunition and stuff you've left there. It ain't going to work. So really, it's hidden away. It's this, I'm talking about something that's um, hidden, um, but we know where it is. We just have to find it. So, and it could be down, and I'm going to pick in this case, um, the jungles of Belize, where, they, where it meets the jungle of Guatemala on the border. Been down there a few times. You can't carry everything with you that you need, but the stuff that's pre-positioned you may well need. So... In those days, in the 70s, when I was out there, mainly late 70s, early 80s, we used to call it twatagwat. You know, it was something that could have happened, never really got off the ground. However, the seven Ps, prior planning and preparation, prevent piss poor performance. Everything's done with the reason. So there we are. What's in the cache? Well, you can put in a cache whatever you want. It doesn't have to be one box. It doesn't have to be one dry bag. It can be whatever. You can have ammunition in there. You can have explosives. You can have food, dry food, because normally you'd be on hard routine, as we've talked about. No point in putting goodies in there because you ain't going to be able to use them. Stuff that's going to survive for quite a long period of time and still be edible and ammunition that's still going to fire when you want it. 
sterilization tablets yeah water no <gasps> no for those who haven't been to the jungle it rains about 12 hours a day if you can't find water in the jungle forget it guys don't even bother going but sterilization tablets yeah for your water bowls chuck them in I've drunk it um, it doesn't quite taste like whiskey but hey um, you know it doesn't do me any long-term not that I know of uh, damage but things like that and then you could add other stuff in there maybe but it needs to be um, waterproofed obviously and the idea is that when you get it eventually it works and you can eat it well the duration of caches I think the ones I dug up the last time I remember had probably been there certainly 18 months from memory um, and you say wow 18 months in the jungle yeah that isn't a long period of time there's no point in putting stuff in the case that ain't gonna last 18 months however you still have to get there and find it so weatherproof is one obviously rains almighty in the jungles and 12 hours a day I would think or was pretty average late afternoon all night until the morning day in and day out so <clears throat> it has to be well um, prepared and this goes on can you imagine after a year after 18 months what sort of condition it might be and if you didn't get it right so the, the when you make when you do a cache and put a cache in you take a lot of things into consideration and some of them stay away from villages I've said we don't go near villages we don't use tracks okay which means the likelihood of somebody else finding your cache is going to be whittled down from you put it outside a village somewhere it'll be gone in the morning they'll have it you know it'll be gone you have to find somewhere that's remote but somewhere that you can log so when somebody else comes to pick it up they can find it you know and I've been there and found caches that were well recorded so stay away from the villages and tracks however more suitable I found out was to use like features that were close to river junctions uh, tributary junctions call them whatever you want but away from tracks and away from villages and then you have to know where they are exactly you know a six-figure grid reference is okay but an eight-figure grid reference is even better um, but you need to be able to navigate in the jungle and when I say that um, if you pick a good location it doesn't want to be too low because of the water you have to take into consideration when somebody gets there and they find the river junction they know what to do from that river junction and this is where it becomes slightly more um, <laughs> I don't want to say technical I'm going to use the word technical so the, the, the patrol has gone out uh, to locate the cache and you know I'll give you an example of what happens in a minute but this is where you find out who your friends are you wouldn't be in the SES at all if you can't map read I can tell you that now this is a local map of Dartmoor tracks villages post boxes reservoirs lots of contour lines nothing like a jungle map I can tell you that now 
what you get on the jungle map is a lot of green. That stands for trees. Lots and lots of contour lines. Some of them very close together, which means it's steep. The further apart a contour line is, would generally say that it's not quite so steep. But features that you can map read from are very difficult and very, very um, hard to find. But that's what you've got. So you go out there and the map, <laughs> you lose your map, you've had it gets destroyed by water you've had it you don't mark your maps in the SAS you're not allowed to if somebody finds them it'll give them all sorts of clues so there's a lot of stuff goes on you know you don't have a big red ring X marks a spot it doesn't work like that so what you have to look at the weather is one to take into consideration nobody can tell me that they know what the weather's going to do after you put a cache in for the next 12 months, 18 months, whatever. You have to prepare in your head, you know, if it gets really bad, this is what you're thinking. How the hell do I get this into where somebody's going to find it? And it becomes you against the jungle. Don't fight the jungle. Never fight the jungle. It'll win. But you have to make common sense decisions. There's four of you. Chinese parliaments. That's what we do. Are we allowed to say that? Well, Rusty just said it, so what? However, that's the way it is. Sit down and then you figure out the best place for your caches where somebody else can come and find it when it's needed. <clears throat> so that's, you know, that's the way it is. Remember, there's animals, wild animals, all over the place. If you don't get it right, the, wind up, the, the wild animals will have a tea party. You know, they'll have a tea party. Unless you chew on ammunition or something, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, it, it, it is quite, it sounds technical, and it is quite technical to, to get it right. So let me give you an idea or an example of how you would go to locate a cache on your future intentions should you be down there and you need it you'll have a map you'll have other forms of um, locating for example grid references um, what it is you're trying to find it might just be a Y tributary two rivers coming in Prominent trees maybe on either side. It's very hard to explain because you're thinking, I can come back and find this. Somebody else has got to come back and find this and they may need it in the emergency. So it's not about just digging a hole and saying that's what it is. Patrol cameras. Everybody, not everybody, sorry, in a patrol, you normally have at least one camera, a patrol camera. That, once you pick your cache, I take a few shots of the surrounds to help in the briefing pack you put together for somebody else that's coming out. When you get back to camp, they're not Polaroid guys. They're polar they, they, they were patrol cameras, small ones. You had to get them developed when you got back. There's no Gucci stuff like there is now. And that's why I'm saying, take the pictures of where your cache is. Then you've got the grid references of where it is. Then you've got your written communication where it is. So somebody, when they pick it up and go, right, I've got to go and find this. I know what to do. So an example, once you've got all that type of stuff, Probably get a helicopter from somewhere down towards the jungle border. You'd have um, a grid reference where you're going to be dropped off at. It wouldn't be on top of the cache. Trust me on that. Uh, it could be a couple of kilometers away. It could be further. Depends on the weather. Depends on the pilot's attitude. Um, but you need to, when you get off that helicopter, you need to make sure you know exactly where you are. Otherwise, you're never going to find anything. 
So first of all, helicopter ride, patrol drops off, confirm where they are before moving anywhere. Once they've got that and they've confirmed the, the right grid reference, everything there ties up, then the command of the patrol, the four guys just get up and go. Okay, you don't walk fast in the jungle. You don't walk fast. Okay, it's a stealth. So they go to where their grid reference is for the cache. And off they go. Uh, it, it's patrolling as normal. But as I say, there's some days you might only make 500 yards in the jungle. Some days you can do a lot more than that. No tracks. Okay, away from villages. Your mission is to locate that cache. So, once you've confirmed everything and you moved out, until you get target, as we'll call it, which is the cache, that's what you were aiming for. When you're there and you think you're there, you look around, you confirm all the features around um, of what you're expecting and once you've got that there's no magic formula of finding stuff you don't have any anything where you could locate um, a case that's in place metal we didn't have any of that all you had were the shovels okay to dig with and it could be something like, let's say you're at a river junction there, and then the, the map, then the, the instructions say east, 100 Okay. So east 100 paces, and it might say, it could say anything, you know. Um, down tree, big, thick, fallen down tree. How over the years is it? But it might, there. it might say, then walk south 20 meters. That's just an example. You until you get on the ground, what you're going to find, and you can't pre log it, you have to wait and do it properly. So you've done that, you get there. And start digging. If the guy's looking out and you, you dig around that area, hoping to find the cache. Once you cache, great. Food. You've got something to eat. <clears throat> because you can't have food with you. But this is actually located. Um, and I've done it. You take the stuff back with you, you get the helicopter, and then once you get it back, it's all examined, what sort of state it's in, uh, how you work, progressing for the future. But as I say, in my day, and before me, as it did it before me, limited equipment, technical, uh, technical equipment, you've got your eyes, you've got your, you've got your compass, you got your shovel. It's not for shoveling, but actually, that's what you've got and what you, what you work with. Great. And I keep this kiss, K I S S. Remember on the ground, don't keep it simple. Okay. K I S S, K stupid. You help the guys that are coming behind you. You may need this stuff in a hurry. You've always got to be thinking out. If you can think 10 steps ahead, well done. Um, you get by that how difficult it is. Um, and you're thankful. Thousands of miles away from home, 
phone up and phone a friend. It doesn't work. You have to be on the ball. All the guys know what And that's the way it works. Same on the An exercise, maybe. It doesn't change. The guys are competent. But never run because you are going to be the one who's going back to pick this stuff up. And teamwork at the end of the day. It might be teams you never see and never meet, but they are on your side. So, yes, they talk about vegetation. And the vegetation can change. It's been there for thousands. Every day you can hear sleep at night there. Trees down every day. So you'd be unlucky that your tree that had fallen a mark on it <laughs> shrouded by another hundred trees that have got but the other stuff are may not have changed you pick prominent arguably the rib yet are probably not going to disappear distance it's been there that long you have to think about um, and that's why we get who dares wins and if you enjoy that one it just from the last one i did